morning everyone we're back again with another video and today our topic is going to be solubility curves so if you notice I have my sugar in the top left corner and I have my soda in the top right corner the sugar is going to be the solid and the gases in the soda of course they're going to be gases and we'll be discussing these more in detail in the next few slides so let's begin now let's look at our solubility curves a solubility curve is a graphic representation that shows the rate of solubility of a solute in a solvent as the temperature changes. If you notice to the left, the rate of solubility of most solids increases as temperature increases. And this makes sense. We can go back to the cooking analogy. So if you was to put salt inside of a pot with cold water in it, it probably would take an extremely long time for it to dissolve. But if you was to take salt and put it into a pot of boiling water, then it's going to dissolve faster because it's going to break apart those chemical bonds even faster. So let's move on to our next slide. So how to determine saturation levels of solutes into solutions? This is actually quite simple. So here's the solubility of sodium acetate. And you notice it's this purple line right here. So now when you plot your point, say if I was to plot a point at 75 degrees Celsius with 150 grams. So now if you notice, if my point is above the line, it's super saturated. If it's on the line, it's saturated. And then if it's under the line, it's un an unsaturated solution. So since my point is above the line, it's going to be a super saturated solution. So let's try another one. Say if I plotted 25 uh, sodium acetate at 25 degrees Celsius with 50 grams. 50 grams of sodium acetate at 25 degrees Celsius. I apologize, y'all. Let's move that out of the way. Now, so here's our point right here. Notice that the point where I plotted it is below the saturation line for sodium acetate. So that will let us know that it is an unsaturated solution. And then last but not least, if I plot a point that was on the line, then that will let us know that it is a saturated solution because it's on the line. Let's take a look at the following solutes and see if they're unsaturated, which means that we can add more solute to the solution. Saturated, which means there's an equal amount of solute and solvent. Or super saturated, which means that there's too much solute and not enough solvent. So let's take a look at number one. Number one says 45 grams of NaNO3 and 100 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius. The first thing I have my students do is identify what they give us. So we need the 45 grams. The NaNO3 is the salute. Now this 100 grams of water, I have them cross that out because they don't need that. And then we circle our third degree Celsius. So now we locate NaNO3 on our solubility curve and we plot our points. 45 grams at 30 degrees Celsius and I plot my points and if you notice NaNO3 is above this point so since this point is below NaNO3 then that's going to let us know that this is unsaturated so there's an unsaturated solution Let's look at our next one. We have 60 grams of KClO3 and 100 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna find our KClO3. Go ahead and circle it so we can identify it quickly. And then we're gonna plot our points. We have 60 grams at 60 degrees Celsius. And when I bring our two points together, this point right here is actually above the line. So since it's above KClO3, saturation line for KClO3, that lets us know that it is super saturated. Ladies and gentlemen, you have two minutes to find out if the next salutes are unsaturated, saturated, or super saturated. Plot your points and write your answers beginning now. Ladies and gentlemen, let's check and see how you did. So for our first one, we have KNO3, and it said 125 grams of KNO3 at 60 degrees Celsius. If you notice, 
our point is above the line for KNO3, so it lets us know that it's going to be super saturated. And I'll just put super for that one. Number four, 12 grams of NH3 at 90 degrees, so 90 degrees Celsius. If you notice, here's our number four, our plot for number four, and then NH3 is actually going to be the plot for number four is going to be above the line for NH3. So that lets us know that it's going to be super saturated. And then we look at our next one, 145 grams of NaNO3 at 80 degrees Celsius. So my plot for number five is actually on the line. So that lets us know that it is saturated. And then number six. 50 grams of KCL at 75 degrees Celsius. And if you notice, this point is actually on the line too. It's on the line for KCL. So that lets you know that it's saturated. And then let's look at number seven. We look at number seven, 80 grams of NaNO3 at 10 degrees Celsius. And then if you notice, 80 is right here, NaNO3 is right here and if you notice that this point actually hits on that line it actually hits on that line so it lets us know that it's going to be saturated now let's take a look at the solubility of gases gases can be dissolved into polar solutions which means they can be dissolved in a solution that has a positive and negative end and if we look at our key example for sodas we have carbon dioxide, which is dissolved into the solution, and the gases, they dissolve better into the soda if the soda is cold. And then, last but not least, the gases dissolve better under pressure. So that means that you want your soda to be closed. So, the key thing I have my students ask themselves is, how do they like their sodas? Do you like your sodas to be cold and closed, or do you like your sodas to be hot and open? Think about the gas law. Let's take a look at a solubility curve for the solubility of gases. If you notice, the rate of solubility of gases decreases as the temperature increases. So let's take a look. Here's our temperature increasing as we go over time. Then the rate of solubility of gases decreases. So it's just like if you had a soda. And we have a soda and we've opened our soda but if we notice, our soda has a lot of gas bubbles at first. Now, the reason why is because the soda is cold. But over time, as we leave our soda on the counter or leave it out, our rate of solubility of the gases actually decreases and the gases leave out of the soda. So that bubbling, that fizzing sound you hear is actually your gases leaving out of your soda as the temperature increases. Now let's go ahead and do a check for gases and solubility. You have two minutes to look at the following solubility curve and answer the following questions beginning now. Now let's take a look and see how you did for your check for understanding. So number one, which substances are gases in the solubility curve? If you notice you have three substances whose rate of solubility is actually decreasing. So that's going to be HCl, NH3, and then SO2. Another way you can check is actually looking at the individual elements. So nitrogen, hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, hydrogen, and chlorine, all of those are gases. Number two, how can you tell? Well, the rate of solubility is actually decreasing for all three of these solutes. Let's look at number three. What happens to gases in a soda as the temperature decreases? The gases solubility rate actually increases. That's why people like their sodas cold because you have more gases dissolved into the soda when it's cold. And number four, what happens to the gases in a soda as the temperature increases? Well, the gases, the rate of solubility for gases actually decreases. So same thing I was saying earlier, as you leave your soda out, the gases eventually bubble out of the soda over time, which causes your soda to taste flat. Now let's look at some solubility curve analysis problems. So let's go ahead and begin with number one. Number one, how many grams of sodium chloride are required to saturate 100 grams of water at 100 degrees Celsius? So how many grams? That's what we're going to be solving for. 
and then of NaCl, which is our sodium chloride, we circle that. I require to saturate 100 grams of water. We don't need this 100 grams, so I'm going to cross that out at 100 degrees Celsius. So now the first thing I tell my students to do is locate NaCl, which is located right here, and then we go to 100 degrees Celsius, which is right here. I'm going to take my line for 100 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to bring it all the way up until I run into NaCl. And once I run into NaCl, I'm going to bring my line all the way across. And that's going to show us that we need 40 grams to saturate 100 grams of NaCl at 100 degrees Celsius of water. Let's look at number two. At what temperature would 140 grams of potassium iodide dissolve? So at what temperature? That's what we're solving for. 140 grams of potassium iodide. That's what we need. And then we definitely need this for potassium iodide. So now let's locate potassium iodide on our solubility curve, which is right here. We have 140 grams. And I'm going to take this number and run all the way across until it hits the line that potassium iodide is on. So now I'm going to take it and I'm going to go straight down. And if I take it all the way down, it's going to hit 15 degrees Celsius. So that's our temperature, 15 degrees Celsius. Ladies and gentlemen, we did problems one and two together. You're going to independently work on problems three through eight on your own. You have three minutes to do so beginning now. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see how you did. So let's take a look at number three. Now, number three, it says at what temperature would 50 grams of NH4Cl dissolve? If you notice, we have our 50 grams right here, and we bring it across until it hits NH4Cl. We bring it down, and that's going to be 50 degrees Celsius. Number four, at 50 degrees Celsius, how many grams of KNO3 will dissolve? So here's 50 degrees Celsius. I'm going to take it up until it hits KNO3, and I'm going to bring it over, and that's going to be 85 grams. 85 grams. Then let's look at number five. How many grams of NaNO3 will saturate water at 25 degrees Celsius? So here's our 25 degrees Celsius right here, and we're going to bring it all the way up until we hit the line for NaNO3. We bring it across, and then it's going to be 90 grams. 90 grams. Let's look at number six. At what temperature would 35 grams of KClO3 dissolve? So let's find our 35 grams, which is right here. And then let's locate our KClO3. So we're going to take it across. And we're going to bring it across, bring it across. And then we're going to hit it about right here. And then we're going to bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. And that's going to be about 75 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Celsius. Then our last one, our next one, how many grams of KCL will saturate water at 10 degrees Celsius? So now let's locate KCL right there and then 10 degrees Celsius. So if I bring it up, bring it up, it's going to hit this line right here it's going to hit that line I bring it over and it's going to end up being 30 grams 30 grams and so now number eight asks what three factors affect the rate of solute dissolving to a solution so you have stirring you have surface area by increasing surface area and then last but not least you're going to have your temperature and I abbreviate temperature. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have these, then you did a wonderful, fantastic job. And if you didn't, just consider it more practice to get better. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this tutorial video was helpful. And I hope you got a lot out of this with solubility curves. I'm Chavis Spivey, signing off with my son, Jordan Spivey. Have a wonderful, awesome day. Peace.